The triple alpha process is a set of nuclear fusion reactions by which three helium-4 nuclei are transformed into carbon. And older stars start to accumulate helium produced by the proton-proton chain reaction and the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen cycle in their cores. The products of further nuclear fusion reactions of helium with hydrogen or another helium nucleus produce lithium-5 and beryllium-8 respectively both of which are highly unstable and decay almost instantly back into smaller nuclei. When the star starts to run out of hydrogen to fuse, the core of the star begins to collapse until the central temperature rises to 108 K. At this point helium nuclei are fusing together to faster than the product, beryllium-8, decays back into two helium nuclei. Once beryllium-8 is produced a little faster than it decays, the number of beryllium-8 nuclei in the stellar core increases to a large number. Then in its core there will be many beryllium-8 nuclei that can fuse with another helium nucleus to form carbon-12, which is stable. The net energy release of the process is 6988116600000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
which results in the reaction rate increasing further still and becoming a runaway reaction. This process, known as the helium flash, lasts a matter of seconds but burns 60-80% to of the helium in the core. The core flash allows the star's energy production to reach approximately 10-11 solar luminosities which is comparable to the luminosity of the whole galaxy. Although no effects will be immediately observed in electromagnetic radiation, for higher mass stars, the helium burning occurs in a shell surrounding a degenerate carbon core. Since the helium shell is not degenerate, the increased thermal pressure due to energy released by helium burning causes the star to expand. The expansion cools the helium layer and shuts off the reaction, and the star contracts again. This cyclical process causes the star to become strongly variable, and results in it blowing off material from its outer layers. Discovery The triple alpha process is highly dependent on carbon-12 and beryllium-8 having resonances with the same energy as helium-4, and before 1952, no such energy levels were known. The astrophysicist Fred Hoyle used the fact that carbon-12 is abundant in the universe as evidence for the existence of a carbon-12 resonance. This could be considered to be an example of the application of the anthropic principle. We are here, and we are made of carbon, thus the carbon must have been produced somehow. The only physically conceivable way is through a triple alpha process that requires the existence of a resonance in a given very specific location in the spectra of carbon-12 nuclei. Hoyle went boldly into nuclear physicist William Alfred Fowler's lab at Caltech and said that there had to be a resonance of 7.69 MeV in the carbon-12 nucleus, and that all of the physicists in the world had missed it. Fred Hoyle's audacity in doing this is remarkable, and initially all the nuclear physicists in the lab were skeptical to say the least. But he was persistent and kept coming back to the lab and talked to every assistant and associate individually. Finally, a junior physicist, Ward Whaling, fresh from Rice University, who was looking for a project started by leaving Hoyle, Ing decided to look for the resonance. Fowler gave Ward permission to use an old Van de Graaff generator that no one else was using, and everyone joined in with suggestions for Ward. The experiment took six months, and Hoyle was back in Cambridge when his outrageous prediction was verified. They put Hoyle as first author on a paper delivered by Ward Whaling at the summer meeting of the American Physical Society. A long and fruitful collaboration between Hoyle and Fowler soon followed, with Fowler even coming to Cambridge. By 1952, Fowler had discovered the beryllium-8 resonance, and Edwin Salpeter calculated the reaction rate taking this resonance into account. This helped to explain the rate of the process, but the rate calculated by Salpeter was still somewhat too low. A few years later, after a project by his research group at the Kellogg Radiation Laboratory at the California Institute of Technology, Fowler discovered a carbon-12 resonance near 7.65 MeV. This eliminated the final discrepancy between the nuclear theory and the theory of stellar evolution. The final reaction product lies in a zero-plus state. Since the Hoyle state was predicted to be either a zero-plus or a two-plus state, electron-positron pairs or gamma rays were expected to be seen. However, when experiments were carried out, the gamma emission reaction channel was not observed, and this meant the state must be a zero-plus state. This state completely suppresses single gamma emission, since single gamma emission must carry away at least one unit of angular momentum. Pair production from an excited zero-plus state is possible because their combined spins can couple to a reaction that has a change in angular momentum of zero. Improbability and fine-tuning Carbon is a vital component of human biology. 12C, a stable isotope of carbon, is abundantly produced in stars due to three factors. 
The decay lifetime of a 8B nucleus is four orders of magnitude larger than the time for 2,4 He nuclei to scatter. An excited state of the 12th C nucleus exists just above the energy level 8B plus 4 He. This is necessary because the ground state of 12 C is 7.3367 MeV below the energy of 8B plus 4 He. Therefore a 8B nucleus and a 4 He nucleus cannot reasonably fuse directly into a ground state 12 C nucleus. The excited Hoyle state of 12 C is 7.656 MeV above the ground state of 12 C. This allows 8B and 4 He to use the kinetic energy of their collision to fuse into the excited 12 C, which can then transition to its stable ground state. According to one calculation, the energy level of this excited state must be between about 7.3 and 7.9 MeV to produce sufficient carbon for life to exist, and must be further fine-tuned to between 7.596 MeV and 7.716 MeV in order to produce the abundant level of 12C observed in nature. Conversion of 12C plus 4 He to 16 O is much more difficult than the production of carbon. No resonance exists for this reaction. Were this not true, insufficient carbon would exist in nature. It would almost all have converted to oxygen. The 7.656 MeV Hoyle resonance, in particular, has been cited by physicists arguing for the existence of a multiverse where different regions of a vast multiverse have different different fundamental constants. According to this controversial fine-tuning hypothesis, life can only evolve in rare patches of the multiverse where the fundamental constants are fine-tuned to support the existence of life.